Hi everybody out there, it's uh, Peter back for yet another video. Today I'm going to do something a bit different. I've done this a couple of times before, but not in um, a large, as large a scale. I've done like a top five studio albums of the band I'm going to show today also. But today I'm going to um, rank all their studio albums from worst to what I think's the best. Okay, so, and the band is Pink Floyd. Now, they have recently released um, the fifth, after 20 years, the 15th uh, studio album, The Endless River. I have not uh, bought that yet. I plan to buy it. Um, it's basically what I hear. If any of you know, heard that, let me know how, how good it is. But um, it's basically... Um, what I hear, an instrumental uh, album, I think it has one song, so it's like a tribute to um, Rick Wright, uh, the keyboard player who passed away a few years back, and um, that'll be their 15th, and as they say, fifth uh, final studio album, so, uh, so I've heard the other 14 albums before this, so I'm going to attempt to put them from 14 to 1. Now, I've done a Pink Floyd top five studio albums before. Now, and um, it's top five is similar to that. Maybe one or two, one has gone uh, in a different position within that in that five, but that's about all. So, um, with that, uh, without further ado, I'll continue. Now, coming in in last position is the the more. Soundtrack to the film more. Um, this, I don't consider it a great album. Um, a lot of instrumental pieces. Um, it has one I consider great song, Cymbeline. It's a really great song. Green is the Colour is also a good song. But it just doesn't hold well together for me. Um, yeah, it's good for two or three songs, but I have to put something in last position and I've decided on this one. Okay. And next, coming at number 13, Uma Guma. Um, I could never really get into the studio part um, of this uh, release. The live album has its moments. Uh, I, if you're going to listen to it, I, I, um, I would suggest the live album you'd probably find better. But, you know, it's up to the individual. And, you know, a moment here or there, but, you know, I can't rank it too high, so... I've placed it today at number 13, Umaguma. Okay, number 12, I've got the first album, The Piper at the Gates of Dawn. Many people rank this very high. Um, I've, I like uh, the Sid Barrett, I like a couple of the early singles they did before the, he released this album, like CMLE Play, I like that. And the other song escapes me at the moment, CMLE Play was the other one. It'll come to me in a minute. But um, this, yeah, Bike's good, Lucifer Sam, but yeah, it just doesn't uh, gel for me for some reason. I've tried over the years, but I've always liked two or three songs okay on this. And um, it just, a lot of people consider this a high ranking album, but you know, things could change. But at the moment, I place it at number 12. Okay. The Piper at the Gates of Dawn. Okay. Number 11, a Saucer Full of Secrets. Um, yeah, I find the title track a bit tedious. And Seesaw's not too bad. Jug Band Blues, a little bit better. Um, probably the favourite song on this is Set the Controls for the Heart of the Sun. And the other is a bit mediocre in my opinion. So I got that at 12, A Saucer Full of Secrets. Okay, I mean 11, sorry, 11. Number 10, A Momentary Lapse of Reason. Um, not their greatest album. Uh, a lot of people like this, uh, a lot of people hate it. Um, I love the song Learning to Fly. Um, that And One Slip, I, I, I like that. The instrumental I'm not big on, On a Turning Away, it's okay. I don't, it's... Um, you know, they've released better songs, but, you know, Learning to Fly, I always loved. 
and one slip, as I said, sorrow isn't bad, but you know, it's it's not their worst and it's not their best. So we got a momentary lapse of reason. Okay, number nine. Uh, another film soundtrack, Obscured by Clouds. This is a little underrated. Um, it starts off with two instrumentals, of pretty good instrumentals. Burning Bridges, it's a good track. Um, I like What's Are The Deal. That's an excellent song. I love that. And Free Four is an excellent song. So that's, I, I'd consider this underrated. But uh, it's worth a listen. And it's pretty av average, average album. I wouldn't say it's sensational, I wouldn't say it's real bad. So it comes in at number nine, Obscured by Clouds. Number eight, The Division Bell. Now, this, for me, has got a lot of good songs on it. Um, a lot of good songs, but not many great songs. Um, I, I like um, Lost for Words, I like High Hopes, Keep Talking, The Last Three Socks, Take It Back's a great song. Um, Poles Apart, not bad. Uh, the instrumental's nice, marooned. What do you want from me is not too bad. And it's a pretty decent album. Um, you know, average to slightly above average, I guess. I prefer it to the other Gilmore um, lead album, um, The Man for Three Laps of Reason. And it's worth a listen and it's worth checking out. Uh, number eight, uh, The Division Bell. Okay, getting down to the end now. Uh, near the end, anyhow. Number seven, I got metal. Um, the centerpiece of this album is Echoes. Great track, no doubt about it. Sensational track. Um, I like San Tropez. Seamus, I'm not big on with the dog, the barking dog in it. Fearless, a lot of people love. I think it's it's average to above average. Pillow wins, not too bad. One of these days is great. As I said, San Tropez, Echoes, a couple other good songs. And um, a little overrated by a little overrated, I feel, but still a, an excellent album. Still an ex, I still like it a lot. Number seven, um, metal. Okay, number six, hot, criminally underrated. The final cut. Uh, this I don't know why this gets a bad rap. It, uh, it resonates for me. I love it. Um, yeah, when the Tigers broke free, that was added to the album when it was remastered. It was on the wasn't on the original album. Uh, the Gunner's Dream, just listen to that. That's sensational. The Heroes Return, Fletcher Moore at Home, Not Now, John. The Final Cut's great. Yeah, it's a pretty good album. This one, there's um, you know, highly recommend this. Um, I prefer a few above it, but it's a it's a top album. The Final Cut, number six. Number five, an album that you know, has grown on me recently and I've got it number five, Adam Hart Mother. Um, yeah, it's five tracks. Alan Psychedelic Breakfast, the last track. It's a bit experimental. You, you, you have to hear it to know. Um, the opening uh, track, Adam Hart Mother, The Sweet. Um, great music in it. Uh, just, um, it's 23 minutes, but, you know, it's uh, very, quite enjoyable. Uh, they've got horn section, they got, and David Gilmore, you know, guitar song, um, great guitar in it. And my favourite song in this is Fat Old Son. I, it's a gorgeous song, and um, also Summer 68, if uh, the Roger Waters song's a decent song too. So this is, um, you know, not top five, but, you know, excellent, excellent album, Adam Hart Mother. Uh, top, it is top five, sorry. Number five. Uh, number four. One of the landmark albums, The Wall. Um, you know, everyone knows about this. Uh, Comfortably Numb. You got um, Another Brick in the Wall Part Two. You got uh, an underrated track, Nobody Home. Mother. You yeah, know, full of great songs. Um, you know. And, um, you know, and uh, what else I got? Uh, uh, Young Lust, another great song. Yeah, so I've always loved this album. One of their great albums, The Wall, number four. Okay, number three. So a lot of people's number one. I think it was my number two. I, I still think the world of it. Number three, Dark Side of the Moon. 
What can you say about it? One of the great albums. Um, Money, Us and Them, Brain, Brain Damage, Time, Breathe. You know, you, everyone knows. You know, doesn't need me to tell you about it. Um, great album, one of the great albums. Yeah, it could be number one. It was number two for a while, as I said. But, um, you know, at the at, at this present time, I'll put two above it, you know, but, but not by any great margin. But... Um, could be number one, you know. If somebody said to me it's the best album, I wouldn't argue with them, you know. So, one of the great albums, uh, The Dark Side of the Moon. Number two, this album is just... I've always loved it. And uh, it's just, I don't know, it's just, it's just sensational. Uh, animals. Five tracks. Uh, book ended with Pigs on the Wing 1 and 2. Nice little um, acoustic uh, numbers. Dogs is sensational. Um, it uses the metaphor of animals to describe people in society, basically. Um, it's got dogs. Uh, pigs, three different ones. Sensational song. The guitar solo at the end when it comes in is awesome. Sheep is probably my favourite on the album, but it's it's not dogs. They're all great. Dogs, pigs, three different ones. You know, bookended by those two short pieces. Um a great album, a great, great album. This uh, number two, I've got animals. And number one, which has been for still my number one, Wish You Were Here. Uh, yeah, I, it just for me has got too many signature songs to not be number one. I mean, it's got my probably my favorite pink, oh, probably is my favorite pink five song, Shine on Your Crazy Dome, part one to five, and then it ends with that part six to nine. And um, Have a Cigar, I love it. Great rock song. Wish You Were one of the greatest songs. Uh, excuse me. Uh, Welcome to My Machine. Um, a great song. If, if I had to pick a weak point, maybe that would be it, but I still love the song. Um, yeah, it's still my number one and um, a lot of people's number one. And um, a lot of people, if they're, if they're, it's not their number one, it's way up there. So that's the end of the uh, video. And number one, I've got Wish You Were Here. I hope you enjoyed that. If you disagree or, or agree or like the video, just let me know. And I'll talk to you again all very soon. Bye.